All right. So in the previous videos, we introduced the notion of a series, an infinite series, is the sum of the terms in a sequence. We talked about convergence and divergence. We gave a couple of examples of series where we can actually compute the sum. Um, so we talked about geometric series, we talked about telescoping series, and we saw how to decide whether or not those converge or diverge. Um, we also uh, introduced the p-test for convergence of a series, although at the time we didn't really have a justification for it. Um, now we start getting into some of the tests for convergence that will let us decide whether or not a series converges or diverges, right? Now these tests are not going to help us find the value for a series if it does converge. They're simply going to answer this question, yes or no, does it converge? The first one is the integral test. So here is the statement of the integral test. Um, so we start with the function. It does have two requirements, and if you are going to apply the integral test, it's important that you confirm that these requirements are verified. The function has to be positive, and it has to be decreasing. Um, the one place where there's maybe a little bit of flexibility here is you could always replace this number one by some other value. Maybe replace that by some integer k. Maybe you want to start at zero. Maybe, maybe you have a function that isn't decreasing everywhere, but you know, for x bigger than or equal to 10, it is decreasing. Well, then maybe you want to start at k is equal to 10, right? Um, and then, of course, if you make that change, you would make the corresponding change down here and here, OK? So we do this standard thing where we talked about this with sequences. We can always define a sequence. If we have any function that's defined um, for at least all positive real numbers, we can restrict the domain to the natural numbers, and that gives us a sequence. So the integral test says that convergence of the series, where we sum the terms in this sequence, convergence of that series, is equivalent to convergence of the corresponding integral, right? So the if and only if is saying, well, if this converges, so does this. If this converges, so does this. Or if you want to put it another way, um, if this diverges, so does this, right? So we look at this integral. If it converges, we know that this one converges. If it diverges, we know that this one diverges. And the idea here is we already have some practice with improper integrals and figuring out whether or not improper integrals converge or diverge. And so anything that we learned about improper integrals and convergence of improper integrals can now be applied to convergence of series as long as we can put our series in this form for the appropriate type of function. Now, if you want to see why this works, it's actually pretty simple. All right, let's draw some coordinate axes. Let's draw a function which is positive and decreasing. Something like that, okay? Um, <clears throat> and of course, it needs to decrease to zero. I mean, it's not in the statement of the theorem, but we know that if it doesn't decrease to zero, we know that this is not going to converge, and we know that that's not going to converge. So better decrease to zero, right? Um, and now we can mark off all the integer points. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on. All right. And we can think about area under the curve, and we can think in terms of Riemann sums, right? So we're going to do, you know, so we can think about doing now, I mean, we really shouldn't talk about Riemann sums when we're talking about improper integrals because Riemann sums need a closed interval to work with. But um, we can just go with sort of a fixed, you know, delta x equals 1. So we look at intervals of length 1, right? Um, and if we do, say, left endpoints, remember that when we do a Riemann sum, we can choose where on each interval we want to pick our point. So if we do delta x equals 1 left endpoints, well, then we get something that looks like this, right? Okay, and so on. And so one of the things that you can see right away is that, well, what are these values, right? This is the point 1, f of 1, 
right? This is the point 2, f of 2, and so on. Um, the sum that we get, right, we get the sum, and going from 1, and I guess we can continue all the way to infinity, of f of n, but f of n is just a n, right, times delta x, but delta x is just 1. So we get the series, actually, right? And what this is saying is that that series, well, that must be bigger than the corresponding integral, right? Okay? Because we can see that we have a little bit extra in each rectangle. So if we knew that this integral diverges, if we know this integral diverges, well, then certainly this series has to diverge as well, right? Because if this is infinite, so is that, because it's bigger, right? Um, but, you know, you could equivalently decide that you're going to do maybe delta x equals 1, but you want to do right endpoints, right? So then we would get the underestimate, right? We use right endpoints, so we get that. Okay. Um, and so if we use right endpoints, well, then again, this would be kind of f of 2. We're using f of 3 for the second rectangle, f of 4 for the third, and so on. Um, so we actually get, we still get the sum of a n, but actually n starts at 2. Okay, n starts at 2. And that amount is going to be less than the integral. Okay. All right. Now that's not quite our series, but <coughs> if the sum starting at 2 converges, well, then certainly the entire sum converges because we can always just add, right? We can just do this. We can say, okay, that's fine. Just add a1 to both sides. Now you have the series, right? This is n equals 1 to infinity of a n. And, of course, if, if this integral converges, adding a number to it is not going to change the convergence of the integral. Um, so if this converges, this value is finite. This is less. So we expect that it should converge as well, right? Um, and, yes, I mean, all, I guess all this really, you know, if we don't put any conditions on the function, this just tells us that, well, this number is not going to become infinite. Maybe that doesn't mean that the series is going to converge because, you know, what if, what if the values bounce around a bit, right? Well, that's where, you know, the function, we're saying the function has to be, function has to be positive, right? So we're always, so that means that all the ANs are positive, so we can't have some series that also oscillates back and forth because if we're jumping back and forth, we'd have to be adding negative values. We're not allowing that, right? Um, and we need the decreasing condition as well. Again, just to make sure that everything fits together the way it should. Um, but that's the integral test, right? So the way you apply the integral test is somebody hands you a series, says, does this converge? Well, you look at the terms in this series and you say, okay, can I identify those terms with the values of some function? If I can, does the function have these properties? Or does it at least eventually have those properties? If it does, then you look at the corresponding improper integral um, hopefully it's one that you know how to evaluate or at least decide on the convergence of. And if you can de decide whether or not the improper integral converges or diverges, well, then you can apply the theorem and you know whether or not your series converges or diverges.